Have you ever wondered about the staggering number of galaxies in the observable universe? The current estimate is mind-boggling 2 trillion galaxies, a figure that keeps growing. But amidst this vastness, where does our pale blue dot stand? And how does cosmology challenge our understanding of our place in the universe? Join us in unraveling the mysteries that span 13.8 billion years of cosmic evolution. Cosmology is a, a philosophically challenging science because it challenges us to think about our place in the universe. And um, one thing we can say is notwithstanding the size and scale of the universe, um, the Earth currently is a special place, albeit physically insignificant, because it's the only place we know of in the universe that supports life. Now, we strongly suspect that, that will, it will not be the only place in a typical galaxy like the Milky Way to support life. But what do we know about the possibility that civilizations themselves are rare? Uh, what do we know about the distribution of civilizations? Uh, places where, as Richard Feynman said, atoms can contemplate atoms in the universe. Feynman wrote a beautiful poem about that idea. Um, Feynman wasn't a known poet, although a great physicist. But I rather like this. He's talking about the, um, the, the emergence of life onto the land and the emergence of a civilization. He says, Out of the cradle onto dry land, here it is standing. Atoms with consciousness, matter with curiosity, stands at the sea, wonders at wondering. I, a universe of atoms, an atom in the universe. Um, he's powerfully, I think, drawing attention to this strange natural phenomena. Uh, that we are, which is atoms that can contemplate atoms, structures that operate according to the laws of nature and yet can think about our place in the universe. Reflecting on Richard Feynman's profound insights into the nature of life, we're prompted to ponder the significance of his words in understanding existence. Feynman's concept of atoms contemplating atoms challenges us to contemplate life's intricacies. But what does Earth's biology tell us about life's prevalence in the universe? Are we a solitary oasis or part of a vast cosmic tapestry? I've increasingly started spending time in the company of biologists. I don't know whether that's a bad thing or a good thing <laughs> for a physicist. But what it's done is teach me that the idea that there might be thousands or hundreds of thousands of places like this out there might not be entirely correct. Think about the history of life on Earth. Um, the Earth formed about four and a half billion years ago out of the cloud that formed the Sun and the rest of the planets in the solar system. And what we do know is for the first half a billion years or so, the Earth did not support life. It's called the Hedean Epoch. It's a time when there were no oceans on the surface. The Earth was too violent a place to support oceans and therefore it was a, a dead world. But what we do know is that pretty soon after the Earth cooled down and the oceans formed. So around four billion years ago or so, um, life began. The transition from geochemistry to biochemistry happened here on the Earth. And given that that happened pretty much as soon as the oceans formed, I think many biologists suggest there may be a sense of inevitability about the origin of life. We will test that, I think, in our solar system in the next few years by looking for life subsurface on Mars, life on the moons of Jupiter or Saturn that have oceans below the frozen surfaces. So it's a testable hypothesis. But I think that a guess may be that simple life, at least, may be relatively common throughout the universe. The thing is, though, when you ask the question that Feynman is asking there, um, uh, how many places does that simple life go on to begin to contemplate the universe? Well, then the history of life on Earth may have something to tell us. See, if you ask the question, when, after the origin of life, four billion years ago, when did complex life appear? Then you have to wait essentially three and a half billion years. You have to look to only 500 million years ago or so for any evidence of complex life on Earth. Before that, you just get single-celled organisms. As we conclude our journey through the cosmos with Professor Brian Cox, we're left with a sense of wonder and awe at the vastness of the universe and the mysteries it holds. From the emergence of life on Earth to the search for life beyond our planet, we've glimpsed into the profound questions that shape our understanding of existence. We're also reminded of the rarity of our planet, Earth, in the vast expanse of the universe. 
Despite its physical insignificance, Earth stands as a unique haven for life, a precious gem nestled among the stars. As we gaze upon the night sky, let us cherish the extraordinary gift of our planet and the remarkable journey of life it sustains.